Hello and welcome to Tarrell Farmhouse in the northeast coast of Scotland. I'm staying here for two nights and I'm so excited because just 10 minutes down the road from here is a cracking location that I have dreamt of shooting for many, many years now and that is Tarbit Ness Lighthouse. I went down there earlier today to do some scouting, do some planning for tonight's shoot. I have been there a few times in the past but it's been many, many years since. So it was nice to get down there to refresh my memory and to find some potential compositions for tonight. So I'm heading out now to get some food and then fingers crossed when we arrive back at the lighthouse we're going to be greeted with some stunning light, some stunning conditions and hopefully we're going to get some cracking photographs too. I'll see you all when I get there. I've arrived at Tarbot Ness. It's actually three hours until the sun's due to set, but you know, these long summer evenings, you tend to get to locations early, but it's quite good because it means you get a chance to, to look around them and just, just enjoy being there, especially as well, because the weather's not too cold, but as, as unlike in the winter, when you arrive in a location and it's freezing. But another good reason why arriving here early is good is because I was struggling to find a composition when I was here earlier but so I went back online and I typed it in and I found photographs that other photographers had taken and a lot of them have been taken from a different vantage point to the ones that I found earlier although they were taken at sunrise so you know obviously works better at sunrise um but I'm gonna go and check that out just now and basically see whether or not it I feel it has more potential than what I was looking at earlier but just and also just enjoy being here just enjoy being here on this lovely lovely summer's evening So I found the spot that all the photographers take their images from and it's not hard to see why. This viewpoint is absolutely stunning. I do see how it's going to work better for a sunrise shoot than a sunset shoot but I'm only here for sunset and I still think that you can get nice light casting on different parts of the land at different times of day. So fingers crossed we're going to get a nice sunset and we're going to get nice light here but if not there's other opportunities further around where I was earlier. So let's wait and see what the conditions are going to do but just look. Just look at this view. hours until sunset but unfortunately the clouds are starting to roll in and I know that a lot can happen in two hours but the light is actually getting worse as we're getting nearer the sunset which is really frustrating and disappointing in in many many ways but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to wait until the sunset I'm going to get out there and I'm going to try some long exposure images because even though the light might get better I am worried that it's not going to and therefore I have to utilize the conditions that I've got now to try and get a decent image of this lovely lighthouse and the view in front of me and um, rather than waiting for a hopeful sunset and not getting one and the light being really dull and bland and just dull 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 so I'm going to go and try and get some long exposure images now in the hope that I can create something beautiful out of this. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're only at a location for one day or one evening, one morning, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter what the conditions are, you need to just learn to utilise what, what, what appears when you get there and what manifests and try and make the most of it. Because even in bad conditions or conditions that aren't what you would consider ideal, there's still opportunities. And that, for me tonight, that is where long exposure photography comes in. Let's get down to that viewpoint again and let's get snapping these images. And fingers crossed they look pretty cool once they're done. I don't know if many of you follow me on Instagram, but I recently posted a shot that I took years ago, one of my favourite images ever. I'll put it here just now so you can see it. The reason this is one of my favourite images ever is because it was a sunset that I never thought was going to manifest to anything. And right at the last moment, the sun popped out from the horizon, just 
just seconds before it set and we literally had about 30 seconds of the stunning light before it disappeared and then when I got home there was this face in the rock on the right hand side of the image. Totally unexpected and a very very special and magical image in, in many many ways. It totally blew my mind but I, I've come to realise that there often is faces in rocks if you look close enough and I've just discovered one here of what looks like a very overweight man with a long nose and a bald head. What do you think of this? It's amazing what you can see and discover in rock faces or anything for that matter when you take the time to sit down and look at them and I think the more creative your mind is and the more creative you're prepared to be the more likely you are to see things like that and I just think it makes being out with your camera so much more special. <laughs> Now because the light isn't very good just now, I'm really trying to find some interesting foreground to give images that I may take some, you know, just give them something that's going to allow them to pop and stand out from the crowd. Now this is something that I've been teaching a lot in my workshops recently, it's this idea that you know, you can get good images in all weather. I've said this before on this channel as well, you just have to, to be a bit more creative sometimes, sometimes it's not as obvious and easy to get a good image. So I've just been down, down this rock face here, there's some rocks and everything at the bottom, trying to find some interesting rock formations and shapes that may lead the eye into the lighthouse. I'm not finding them, but what I have found is some nice coastal flowers that I'm going to go down with my camera and try and photograph them with the lighthouse in the background to just give that image something that little bit different because where I am right now is a location that I've seen online that a lot of people have shot. Mostly it's sunrise, it's not sunrise just now as I said we're waiting for the sunset but this spot here is a very famous viewpoint from a photographer's point of view at this location and I, because it's not working in my favour tonight with the light so far anyway, I need to get more creative and try and shoot an image that maybe hasn't been shot here before and I've not seen any images, close up images, of nice coastal flowers with the lighthouse in the distance so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. There are times in landscape photography when quite often what you're doing is trial and error and I had a good idea with these these coastal flowers here um, in the foreground leading into the lighthouse because I took an image in Berg Head, you will have seen that a few videos ago, where I did just that and I blurred out the, the foreground of the, the coastal plants and I had the sun setting in the background that was in focus and it worked really well and I thought maybe that would be another good idea for here but it isn't, it, it's not looking as I'd hoped it would. But like I say, I believe in, that there are times in landscape photography, especially when all the rules that you've been taught are difficult to find. Right now I'm struggling to find leading lines, I'm struggling to find the idea of rule of thirds, I'm struggling to find a focal point because unfortunately the tide is out, so a lot of these rocks which would normally be covered a little bit more and would be better for long exposure photography are out of the water which means there's a lot of messiness that I potentially might end up getting in my frame because of that. Now I'd really hoped when I saw that this was a really good spot to get an image here but it's not working. I think what I'm going to do is pack up my gear and head further into the, into the lighthouse to where I was this afternoon when I was scouting out this location and looking around and seeing if I can find some more interesting compositions a little bit closer to it. I would really love to get a long exposure shot here but we've still got about an hour and a half until the actual sunset and I think the tide is coming in. With a little bit of luck, if I go and shoot over there just now, try and find something interesting while I'm waiting, hopefully in an hour or so's time the tide will be in a little bit more and the chances of getting a good long exposure image will be hopefully a little bit easier. walking up the main the main path to the lighthouse and 
that's an image that I normally would find very, very boring. It's appealing to me right now. I'm standing here underneath the, the third tallest lighthouse in Scotland and I quite like the idea of just standing here and getting a long exposure image of it. Just the lighthouse itself with the clouds moving behind it causing the streaks. Unfortunately we have got these telegraph poles here that are going to ruin the image slightly but I'm getting a good vision about this. So I'm going to get out my camera and try and capture what I've got in my head. Although I'm also thinking I might try and get one of the whole lighthouse but then try and get one just of the top half of it and that way those telegraph poles won't be in the frame. What a good idea! Oh and quickly, you probably can't see it but the view of the mountains over there right now over the sea is stunning. It's not often that you'll hear me say this, but I am very, very happy with that photograph. Well, this camera is going to pick this up, but can you hear the bird song right now? I literally can't remember the last time I was surrounded by so many different species of birds. And the noise is incredible. And what is really nice is right at the top of the lighthouse, there's all these um, birds. I'm guessing they're house martins or or swift swallows, something around that, you know, that sort of species, but they're all flying around the top of the lighthouse and it's so beautiful to witness. I'm guessing that is the pre-sunset shoot complete. Still not looking very hopeful over there for a sunset to break, but we've still got about an hour and 10 minutes to go until the sun officially sets. Hopefully we'll get some golden hour and hopefully we'll get some night's light afterwards. But I'm gonna end this video here. Will we get a sunset? I don't know, but if we do, you will find out in the next episode. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and it's given you some ideas of things you can do while you're waiting for golden hour to, to come. Because at the end of the day, we shouldn't just, you know, restrict our photography to those golden hours of the days. We should be out enjoying it in all weathers, all moods and at all times of the day. I'll hopefully see you all again next time.